In this video, we will discuss the NEET PG questions of 2020. This is the pathology. We will discuss the pathology questions. Now, we discuss few of the pathology questions in the part first of the video. This is the part second. Now, going to the question number one. So, a 25-year-old male presented with 2-centimeter thyroid nodule. A thyroidectomy was done and the histology picture are as given below. What could be the diagnosis? So, what are the options given? It is the papillary carcinoma thyroid, follicular adenoma, a Graves disease and adenomatous goiter. Now, here the histology is the key. So, in the histology, you should be able to appreciate the papillae. So, here you can see there are some papillae having fibrovascular core inside of it. There are some features of the papillary carcinoma which we will discuss. Now, here the answer is papillary carcinoma of the thyroid. Now, we have to see what are the features which are present in pap -CA. Okay. Now, in pap -CA, if you go, you have few uh, of the features. One of the first is the presence of papillae having a very good fibrovascular core then you have the orphan any nuclei that is the ground glass nuclei or the optically clear nuclei what do you understand by that if you see the picture you will see the each of the nuclei they are very clear okay you are able to see the white portion below it okay so it is optically clear or is known as ground glass nuclei so these are very characteristic of your pap ca then nuclear grooves nuclear grooves are nucleuses having a longitudinal uh, line going through it so this is the grooving okay so these grooves are present in few of the carcinomas now the, uh, which are the carcinomas one is your pap ca and other is an ovary it is granulosa cell tumor of the ovary this that also has uh, grooving which is present then nuclear inclusions are present then samoma bodies are present now samoma bodies are a type of calcification you can see over here the blue blue part the concentric part uh, the round round like this so this is known as samoma bodies so these are actually the calcification which has taken place the dystrophic calcification now samoma bodies are now again seen in many diseases so one is your pap ca thyroid then is in the ovary in serous cyst adenoma cyst adenos carcinoma so that range of ovary uh, tumors it is seen then in meningioma you have samoma bodies so this is the regarding to the pap ca so if you see papillae you see optically clear nuclei in an examiner histology it is a pap ca now what are the ihc markers now ihc markers can also be asked okay so in relation to your papillary carcinoma of uh, thyroid the C ck19 ttf1 and pax8 these are the three markers out of which ck19 is very important okay so in this picture you can see uh, the tumor is positive for ck19 however the normal thyroid is uh, not showing ihc over there so this is the uh, picture now going to the question number two question number two uh, a 15 years old boy presented with fever and chills for three days on examination he was found to have delayed skin punch ti pinch time and dry oral mucosa a peripheral blood smear revealed the following picture identify the pathogen involved now here in this uh, you can identify that this is pbs picture and in this pbs picture the rbcs are showing the parasites now which parasites are they so their options are babesia you have plasmodium vivax falciparum and salmonella typhi so uh, the main confusion is between the vivax and the falciparum so whenever you see multiple rings present so in this rbc you are seeing there are double rings are present in this rbc also double rings are present the two paras two ring forms are present so this is characteristic of falciparum okay in vivex you have single ring present and in the falciparum you will have thin ring present not thick ring present so thin ring present multiple rings if you see they are very characteristic of falciparum so here answer is plasmodium falciparum now going to what are the other features uh, in the future slides you can see what are the other features which can be present in falciparum so is the uh, you can see over here this is the banana shape gametocyte the if you see such picture banana shape gametocyte this is again very very characteristic of your falciparum
okay if you see this it is falciparum only now going to the vivex in the vivex you can you can have single rings and very characteristic of the uh, vivex is the presence of trophozoites so these trophozoites they are very characteristic of your vivex going to the other uh, hemoparasites this is babesia so you can see over here it is a cross is there okay it is like a cross this is known as maltese cross appearance this is seen in babesia okay this is again a very spotter slide if you have it it is a babesia only and if you have this structure having flagella okay this is trypano soma so there are few of the parasites only which we can see on the blood slide on the pbs they are these okay you can have your plasmodium vivax falciparum babesia trypanosoma so these are the few of the hemoparasites now going to the question number 3 a 5 year old child presented with history of blood in the stools on examination there was a polypoidal mass present in the rectum the biopsy of which is shown as below okay here Uh, a most probable diagnosis is now there its options are villus adenoma juvenile polyp vascular malformation and serrated adenoma okay now uh, here you should remember again the histology the key here in these questions is the histology only so here this histology which is showing a polypoidal mass like this which is regular on the margins and have cystic spaces inside okay the dilated part okay you can see these are very small small this is the dilated part this is known as cystic space this is a cystic space so these cystic spaces if they are present these are very characteristic of juvenile polyp and the answer here is juvenile polyp now villus adenoma how it will look like is so villus adenoma you will have many villi present okay many villus like structures will be present okay so you can see many villi are present over here so this is villus adenoma in av malformation what will be there there will be very thick blood uh, thick blood vessels having rbcs within okay so so you can see this is the blood vessel this is the blood vessel this is the av malformation and in the serrated adenoma you will have few of the serrations which are present okay and it will be very mucin rich tumor okay so here the diagnosis is juvenile polyp now going to the question number uh, what is most common pancreatic endocrine neoplasm now this is one liner question only the answer here is insulinoma now in pancreas the endocrine neoplasm are very less okay mostly the tumor if it the question is what is the most common pancreatic neoplasm so the most common are the exocrine neoplasms that is your your pancreatic adenocarcinoma okay but here the question is most common endocrine neoplasm so the answer here is insulinoma Now going to next question, a patient uh, has fatigue, okay, and is not gaining weight. Body is warm. Investigation will show. Now here you have to identify the how. What is the patient? Is he hyperthyroid? Is he hypothyroid? So if if patient is not gaining weight, that means the basal metabolic rate is high of the person. That is the patient has hyperthyroidism, okay. And in hyperthyroidism, heart is the picture. The picture you get is your T three and T four will be high and the T S H will be low. So your option is the first one. So low T S H with more T three and T four. The other options are just uh, to confuse you only. So you can see high T S H with normal T three and T four. High T S H with you thyroid picture. So you thyroid second and third options are just the same only. So the answer here is. You have to know that if a basal metabolic rate is high, it is hyperthyroidism. Going to question, next question. So a fifty-one year old male uh, person come to come with a complaint of hematuria. Okay, on examination he was normotensive and had pedal edema. Investigation really uh, revealed the patient had no glucosuria and had a creatinine value of nine milligram. percent renal biopsy shows uh, this picture you have to identify what investigation to do to identify the etiology of the disease now there are three things which are given in this so firstly the patient has uh, hematuria that means it is a kind of a nephritic syndrome per okay and the creatinine uh, value you can see it's very very high it's 9 
so patient is going into end stage renal disease okay so uh, uh, nephritic syndrome along with uh, end stage renal disease is very well seen in your rp gn okay also if you see into histology the picture which is given so you can see this is your these are your glomeruli okay so these glomeruli are seen normally what happens is normally glomerular tuft is there and then there is your empty space over here bowman space but here you can see the whole bowman space is covered by this proliferation the mesangial proliferation which has taken place okay and this is in the form of crescent okay so this is the tuft which is present inside and this is the proliferation which is taking place so this is the case of rpgn and in rpgn uh, there are many causes okay in, to rpgn so one is good pasture syndrome so good pasture syndrome the etiology behind it is anti gbm antibodies so the answer here is anti gbm antibodies however if you see in this question hiv rna has nothing to do with this okay urine electrophoresis also you will get nothing in that and ana is done for sad okay but here it is the picture is of nephritic syndrome okay and it points towards end stage renal disease which is the rpgn now going to next question the uh, 11 year old boy presented for cuff for 15 days on examination he was found to have cervical lymphadenopathy now lymph node examination shows following picture which could be the diagnosis i have uh, deliberately taken two pictures so as to make you clear so uh, now these all are granulomatous diseases okay this is very clear they are telling cervical lymphadenopathy and you can see many granulomas in this diagram in this histological picture so here if you see uh, going towards the most common cause of granulomatous disease that is your tuberculosis okay in tuberculosis this is the most common it will always present with cough okay and then you can have cervical lymphadenopathy okay so if you go towards your syphilis it will not have cervical lymphadenopathy by chance it has only uh, lymphadenopathy it will have inguinal lymphadenopathy okay also uh, sarcoidosis the picture is different okay there is not uh, these many lymphocytes which are present okay leprosy uh, mostly uh, your, your uh, there will be skin punch biopsy which will be given okay it does not involve the lymph nodes it in, uh, you will get mostly the skin punch biopsy in that you will have the granulomas so here the picture you can see the giant cells very beautiful giant cells there are there there are langhen types of giant cell there is beautiful caseous necrosis which is there okay so this is the picture you get in tuberculosis also if you go by exclusion only okay cough and cervical lymphadenopathy in india you will have the most common cause will be tuberculosis only okay now going to the next question this is bit difficult question uh, uh, this is a 40 year old person presented with 10 into 8 uh, centimeter swelling in the retroperitoneal biopsy was taken from the lesion now this is the lesion in the histology which is given the molecular analysis demonstrated translocation 12 to 16 a most probable diagnosis is now this translocation is very characteristic of one tumor okay if you remember that that will be very uh, good so translocation uh, 12 to 16 is characteristic of myxoid liposarcoma so here in the picture also if you go uh, this is a picture of myxoid liposarcoma what are the features so they are this areas okay the myxoid areas okay and you have your chicken wire blood vessels the compressed part you can see this compressed part this compressed part this compressed but this is known as chicken wire blood vessels chicken wire blood vessels so these chicken wire blood vessels are seen in myxoid liposarcoma now next time they can be asked like that also the chicken wire blood vessels are seen where so it is seen in uh, myxoid liposarcoma we will just look into the histology of the other tumors also one is your lipoma okay this is the lipoma you can see so very beautifully adipocytes are there so there is no hypercellularity no spindle cells are there only adipocytes are present so this is the lipoma then this is your synovial sarcoma in the synovial sarcoma you can see how uh, there are spindle cells which are present 
okay and this is the pleomorphic sarcoma so here you can see the pleomorphism the few of the nuclei they're so large and bizarre looking so this is the pleomorphic uh, liposarcoma for uh, attempting these type of question you should understand that you should go through the robins okay the histology you should be clear with that so therefore you can attempt these questions now going to the next question a 35 year old woman with a long history of dyspnea chronic cough sputum production wheezing uh, wheezing dies of respiratory failure uh, following a bout of lobar pneumonia she was not a smoker nor any alcoholic a lung biopsy was sh autopsy is shown in the image which of the following underlying conditions was most likely associated with the pathological changes okay now in this picture only you can see okay you have to make uh, the history is very vaguely given okay so in this the uh, the diagnostic part with the picture okay you can see the air spaces are very dilated okay the air spaces are very dilated and air spaces are dilated in a condition which is known as emphysema okay so emphysema is a condition which you get very dilated air spaces the alveoli septa they break okay so uh, if you know what are the causes of emphysema so out of there one cause is deficiency in alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency is there so this is the answer over here so the uh, you have to go by this okay you should know there are two steps to it you should firstly see the dilated air spaces are there this is emphysema and then you should know that in emphysema various causes are there out of which one causes alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency uh, because this enzyme is uh, helpful to destroy the proteases okay so when there is deficiency of this enzyme the proteases the level increase and they destroy the alveolar septa so this was all about the pathology questions of NEET PG 2020 uh, do like share and subscribe to this channel I have many videos regarding these topic in the theory portion also you can watch that also to get a much, much better clarity uh, thanks for watching this video. You can ask the uh, queries in the comment box also. Thank you.